Military doctors know well that bleeding to death is the leading preventable way to die on the battlefield, and recent horrific mass shootings have brought this lesson home as well. Emergency temporary bleeding control is needed so that the patient can survive long enough to reach an operating room where a surgeon can definitively fix the problem. Some traumatic bleeding, like distal extremity trauma, can be effectively temporized with simple techniques like pressure or a conventional tourniquet, techniques that an ordinary bystander who's taken a stop the bleed class can effectively provide. But certain hemorrhage sites are more challenging and can't be effectively addressed with these simple techniques. Chief among these difficult sites are bleeding inside the abdomen, pelvis, or groin. When severe bleeding is originating from one of these sites, emergency temporizing control is far more challenging. In the past, one of the only emergency means of temporizing this kind of bleeding was to perform a resuscitative thoracotomy in the trauma bay and place a cross clamp across the descending aorta. Obviously, this comes with significant morbidity to the patient if he or she even survives, and it comes with risk to the providers because ED thoracotomies are not simple procedures in a crowded, chaotic trauma bay. Reboa, or resuscitative endovascular balloon occlusion of the aorta, helps provide the same life-saving aortic occlusion without you needing to crack the patient's chest. Essentially, Reboa is a catheter with a balloon at the end. The catheter is placed into the common femoral artery at the groin and routed up the descending aorta. The balloon is inflated to stop blood flow further downstream. Within the descending aorta, the balloon can either be placed high above the celiac trunk, that would be zone 1, or low below the renal arteries, which would be zone 3, and you place it depending on where you think the source of bleeding is. Reboa is appropriate for patients who have suspected massive hemorrhage from somewhere in the abdomen or pelvis and who have become either pulseless or are experiencing severe hemodynamic shock that is not responding to resuscitation. The probability of massive hemorrhage causing the presenting shock or cardiac arrest needs to be determined with the usual clinical methods, such as determining whether or not the trauma is penetrating or blunt, and using a FAST exam to identify free fluid in the abdomen. Like for the emergency thoracotomy, if efforts would clearly be futile, you should not initiate reboa. A patient who presents with massive head trauma or obviously non-survivable injuries is probably not going to make it. Patients who have been pulseless for more than 15 minutes are also probably not appropriate Reboa candidates. And chest trauma is still probably best handled with a traditional resuscitative thoracotomy, because access to the chest gives you the potential ability to directly intervene on the traumatized anatomy. And Reboa is not just for patients wheeling into the trauma bay. For example, clinically, it's been used for obstetric patients who are experiencing severe postpartum hemorrhage, hemodynamically unstable lower GI bleed patients, or in surgical cases where there is deemed to be a high risk of massive hemorrhage. So now that we've discussed when and why to use Reboa, let's talk about how to use Reboa. In this video, I'll show you how to use the most commonly available consumer Reboa kit. Now, full disclosure, the manufacturer did send us this training kit um, for free for us to use in our video, but we received no monetary compensation for our work and we have no formal relationship with the company. Okay, let's see what you'll need to deploy Reboa. First of all, you will need a standard arterial line setup and an ultrasound to help you obtain common femoral arterial access. I covered this all in my arterial line video, which you should definitely watch if you haven't already. I'll place the link in the top right hand corner here, come back to this video when you're done. You will also need the Reboa catheter and a Reboa insertion convenience kit. The convenience kit comes with the items you'll need to obtain arterial access that is compatible with the catheter, and if you don't have the kit, you'll need to scrounge up the components individually. The convenience kit comes with a finder needle, syringe, guide wire and 7 French sheath, sterile flushes, sterile drape, and tools you need to sew in the sheath, scalpel, suture, and a catheter fastener. The convenience kit does not come with a 5 French sheath, and we'll discuss this more later, but some providers like to gain initial arterial access with a 5 French sheath. So if you're one of those people, you'll need to find that separately. Of course, you should wear full PPE, especially if this is a trauma. And to the best of your ability, you should keep this procedure as sterile as possible, although I recognize that in a trauma situation, this is very challenging. Alright, let's have a closer look at the Reboa catheter itself. 
Obviously the catheter itself is this long, fairly rigid tube. Notice along the entire length are length markers measured in centimeters. In this particular catheter model, the ER Reboa Plus, there are also these bigger solid white markers. These specify zone one and zone three positions in average sized patients. The zone one markings are between 45 and 49 centimeters, and the zone three markings are between 26 and 29 centimeters. The tip of the catheter is a P-tip, which helps mitigate intimal trauma in the blood vessel. You can see that the tip opens up to the lumen of the catheter, which allows you to transduce blood pressure through the catheter when you hook it up to an arterial line pressure transducer. Also note, some models of the Reboa catheter, like this Reboa Plus I'm showing you, have a lumen big enough to accommodate leaving behind a 0.025 wire. And that can be very helpful for vascular or interventional radiology colleagues when the patient makes it to the OR or the IR suite. This orange peel away protects the balloon and when advanced forwards, straightens the P-tip so you can insert the catheter. I'll pull it backwards so we can look at the balloon, but in real life, I suggest you don't do this until the catheter is inside the patient. The balloon itself is pretty simple, and if you look closely, you'll see it has two radio-opaque markers, one at each end of the balloon, so you can see it on x-ray or fluoro. All right, let's have a look at the other end of the catheter. Here will be affixed a tag that you can use to record important information such as insertion distance, inflation time, inflation volume, and blood pressure changes. Whether you record it here or somewhere else, all of this information needs to be recorded somewhere. There are two ports, a red art for arterial port and a white ball for balloon port. It's pretty self-explanatory, but the art port accesses the actual lumen of the catheter. This is how you can transduce pressure or leave behind a wire. And the balloon port fills and deflates the balloon. Here's the balloon blowing up. Notice the balloon naturally comes with a small amount of air inside. I'll say it again later, but it is important to evacuate all the air before use by attaching a syringe and applying five seconds of negative suction pressure, then turning the stopcock to the off position. All right, with that out of the way, let's go through the procedural steps for Reboa. In my mind, there's actually a step zero for Reboa placement, and that would be obtaining femoral arterial access. To deploy Reboa, you will need a 7 French sheath, like the one that comes in the convenience kit, inserted into the common femoral artery. If a patient arrives and he is immediately in need of Reboa, obviously you should be placing a 7 French sheath immediately. But there will be patients who don't quite meet the indications for Reboa, but you are concerned that they are moving in that direction. In those cases, you should obtain early common femoral arterial access. Not only will that give you continuous arterial pressure monitoring capability, but it will significantly speed up your deployment of Reboa if the patient ultimately needs it. There are two schools of thought when it comes to obtaining early femoral arterial access. Some people feel that early arterial access should be obtained with a 5 French sheath, and if the patient ultimately needs Reboa, this can be upsized to a 7 French sheath for deployment. The reasoning is to reduce the hole that is made in the artery, which reduces the risk of a pseudoaneurysm. Other providers obtain early arterial access with a 7 French sheath straight from the get-go. Their reasoning is that the size difference between a 5 French and a 7 French sheath is probably negligible, and it's not worth the extra time it would take to upsize the sheath in the event of a Reboa emergency. By the way, if the patient already has an 18 gauge arterial line catheter in place, like one you might leave uh, using a dart, uh, you can certainly try to upsize that to a 7 French sheath. But because these catheters are very long and floppy, it can be difficult to pass a wire through them when you go to upsize. So I don't recommend using an 18 gauge catheter routinely as your early access method. Okay, let's briefly show what this would look like. Assume I've got a blunt trauma patient with a known splenic injury, but stable vitals for the time being. I decide that I want early CFA access, and I choose to place a five French sheath with the usual Seldinger technique. Again, you can learn more about that in our video all about arterial lines. Suddenly, our patient crashes, and we know we need to get to the OR immediately, and we can deploy Reboa to buy ourselves time to get there. Over a wire, I upsize the sheath to a 7 French. Now the remaining steps can be remembered with the mnemonic MEFIS. Step 1. Measure. 
Measure the catheter for either zone 1 or zone 3 placement, depending on your patient. Zone 1 is measured from the sternal notch down to the femoral access site. Zone 3 is measured from the xiphoid process down to the femoral access site. Alternatively, you can skip measurement if you choose to use the empiric zone markings found on certain Reboa catheters. Step 2. Empty the balloon. Place a 10cc syringe onto the ball port. Make sure the stopcock is open to the syringe and then apply negative suction pressure for a few seconds before locking the stopcock again. Also, make sure that the orange peel away is advanced all the way over the P-tip. By the way, here I took the orange peel away off of the balloon to show you what was happening, but in real life you should leave the peel away over the balloon while emptying it. Any extra friction only risks damaging the balloon. And for similar reasons, I don't think you need to test the balloon for inflation. Step 3. Flush. Attach the arterial line tubing to the art port of the Reboa catheter. Then flush the line completely. Step 4. Insert. Insert the tip of the orange peel away into the valve of the 7 French sheath. You'll need to push it in about a half centimeter and you will feel a good positive response when it is firmly seated. If it is not in far enough, it will pop out when you go to advance the catheter. With the peel away firmly seated, advance the catheter about 15 centimeters. Then you may retract the orange peel away and leave it back by the ports. Continue advancing the catheter to the distance that you measured back at step 1. And now if x-ray is immediately available, you could consider shooting a film to confirm that the radio-opaque markers of the balloon are in the zone that you desire. We didn't need to here, but if you need more room to continue advancing the catheter, you can peel apart the orange peel away. Step 5. Inflate. Inflate the balloon with a syringe of saline at the ball port. Do not overinflate the balloon because this can traumatize the aorta. Remember the catchy phrase, start 2, start 8, don't overinflate. This means that for zone 3, where the aorta is smaller, you should start with 2 cc's of saline, and for zone 1, you should start with 8 cc's. As you inflate the balloon, observe the arterial line pressure tracing coming from the catheter. Once you see a sudden, obvious positive response in blood pressure, the balloon is sufficiently inflated and you should lock the balloon port. You can also check distal pulses to confirm that you are occluded. Do not forget to record the time of balloon inflation and the volume that you placed in the balloon. You obviously won't be able to see this in real life, but this is what the balloon looks like when properly inflated in situ. And when I overinflate the balloon, it develops this squared off appearance. And if you ever need to reposition the balloon, do not forget to deflate the balloon and then reinflate it when you're done. I should also mention it is possible to inject diluted contrast into the balloon, but because it already comes with radio-opaque markers, I don't do this. Do not use full-strength contrast because its viscosity will gunk up the balloon. Step 6. Secure. After the balloon is inflated, you need to keep positive control over the catheter because the pulsations of arterial blood in the aorta will tend to push the catheter back out. Definitively secure the catheter by using the catheter fastener included in the convenience kit. At this point, Reboa is fully deployed and you need to get the patient to an operating room as quickly as possible. In zone 1, Reboa should not be up for any more than 60 minutes and ideally it should be less than 30 minutes. In zone 3, you get a little more time, no more than 90 minutes, and ideally, no more than 60 minutes. While the catheter is in place, flush the art port periodically to ensure you continue to have blood pressure monitoring capability. What about when it's time to take down Reboa? Well, the key thing to remember is to deflate the balloon slowly and prepare for rebound hypotension. If you're in the OR, that would be a good time to let anesthesia know that they're in for a wild ride. We like to take the balloon down over the course of five minutes to really give the patient time to hemodynamically compensate. If you have the capability, you should shoot an arteriogram through the sheath to confirm that you still have good distal flow. After you remove the sheath, hold full occlusive pressure at the femoral artery access site for 10 minutes. Then for the next 20 minutes, gradually decrease the pressure. You should do serial checks of the access site to make sure that a pseudoaneurysm isn't developing, and you should check distal pulses bilaterally. Some of the arteriotomies may need to be repaired surgically. Well, that's Reboa in a nutshell. 
One thing to remember is that Roboa is still a fairly new technique, and so I expect that the technology and the best practices will continue to evolve. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button below. We really appreciate it, and it helps keep this show running. And until next time, dominate the day. Thank you.